This is Rob Weinberg, and on this channel, we empower people to take control of their futures through expert mortgage, financial, and real estate strategies. If it's your first time watching us today, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and smash that bell so you get notified on all of our future content we're putting out every single week for you. In today's lesson, what I want to cover is reverse mortgages. And I want to do an introduction to reverse mortgages because there's so much information out there. Maybe you're someone 62 or older, or you have a family member who's age 62 or older looking for information about a reverse mortgage. What is a reverse mortgage and how does it work? So what a reverse mortgage is, is it's a mortgage product that allows eligible seniors to tap the equity in their home without needing to sell their property. Repayments are not required on a reverse mortgage. Now there's different ways to implement a reverse mortgage. Um, you're either going to have a lump sum at closing where you get a sum of money and, and a lump sum after the closing. The next way is going to be a 10 year payment where we set up a specific amount of money for you to receive monthly or quarterly or annually from the reverse mortgage. And the last way is going to be a line of credit, a HECM, H-E-C-M line of credit, which is a growing line of credit that never needs to be repaid. Those are going to be the different ways that you're going to access money from reverse mortgage. What are the requirements of reverse mortgage? So to be eligible for reverse mortgage, you're going to need to be, in most cases, at least 62 years or older, and you're going to need to have the ability to pay your property taxes, your homeowner's insurance, and keep up the property, like the regular maintenance on the property. So that's what's going to be required. You also have to have a substantial amount of equity in your property. When I say substantial, my litmus test is typically at least 50% equity in your home. What is home equity? It's the total amount of the market value of your home today, subtracted by the amount that's owed on any mortgages, lines of credit, second mortgages or liens on the home. And that result there of that equation is going to be the equity in the home. Now, typically for a reverse mortgage to be eligible, in most cases, you're going to need to have at least 50% equity in the home or more. If you have less than 50% equity, it's not that the reverse mortgage won't work. It's that you will likely be required to bring a large sum of money to closing in order to make it feasible to get that reverse mortgage. So that's the requirements. Now, why does someone get a reverse mortgage? With all the stigma out there, the negativity in the media and press about reverse mortgages, why would someone go and actually do this? So the most common reasons that people get reverse mortgages would be to supplement retirement income, pay for medical expenses, home improvements, or pay their existing debts off because they don't want to have those monthly payments anymore during retirement. So the most common one is to supplement retirement income. So let's kind of look at how that plays out. A lot of seniors, they get to retirement and they've got their social security. Maybe they have a small pension or annuity, but there's a shortfall there, especially with inflation soaring recently. There's a shortfall of money every month that needs to be made up somehow. So the reverse mortgage can be a great way to do that because you've built all this equity in the home. Now you can get some of that money back. So with a case like that, we would set up a reverse mortgage line of credit, most likely, and you'd have the ability to get money off of that every month, every couple months or once a year to alleviate that shortfall between the amount of money you have coming in versus the amount of expenses that you have. Realize that because the reverse mortgage has no required payments, immediately when you get the reverse mortgage, if you're paying off a current forward mortgage, you're going to have an extra margin in your budget because that mortgage principal and interest payment goes away. However, don't forget, you do need to make payments for your property taxes, your homeowner's insurance, and any maintenance on the home or upkeep on the home just to keep it in you know, livable, safe condition. So those are the main reasons why people take out reverse mortgages. Now, repayment. How does that work? When does that happen? So the reverse mortgage repayment is going to occur really whenever you want. If you're living in the home, you can pay that reverse mortgage every month. You don't have to, but you can make payments on it. Little known fact, a lot of my senior clients that are still working, they'll make payments on that reverse mortgage to pay that principal balance down and increase their line of credit availability for after they're no longer working. But the reverse mortgage does have to be repaid at a certain point. So that point is going to be when the borrower sells their home, moves out, or passes away. So again, when you sell the home, you move out of the home, or you pass away. 
So when any of those three things occurs, you do have to have the mortgage, uh, the reverse mortgage repaid within a certain amount of time. Obviously, if you pass away, someone else will handle that uh, as part of your estate and getting everything rectified after you're gone. Now let's talk about the reverse uh, mortgage credit requirements and the line of credit. So the reverse mortgage credit requirements, they're not as strict as a regular loan because you're not making regular payments. So I've gotten people approved that have much lower credit. Um, making principal payments affects the reverse mortgage because the reverse mortgage goes up every month when you're not making payments because the interest gets added to the back end of the loan. But if you're actually making payments every month, the principal can go down and your reverse mortgage line of credit increases that credit line we were talking about before. So that's a big advantage of making repayments while the reverse mortgage is outstanding and you're living in the home risks of a reverse mortgage. So again, lots of stigmas out there. What are the downsides to a reverse mortgage? What are the risks? Number one risk is going to be that there's a large amount of upfront closing costs. Now, reverse mortgages in most cases are backed by the federal government or HUD, the Housing and Urban Development. So there are some upfront fees that have to be paid in order to get the benefits of the reverse mortgage. And those Closing costs can be more costly than a regular forward mortgage. Keep in mind, though, you're also getting a lot more benefits than you're getting in a forward mortgage. And in most cases, we've found that those upfront costs are recouped within the first 12 to 18 months of having the reverse mortgage. But just keep in mind, if you're not going to keep it long, that's a huge risk. Uh, that's the next thing I wanted to mention to you is really five to seven years is a timeline I like to use where a senior can get a reverse mortgage and know that they're going to get bang for their buck when it comes to those closing costs. However, if unfortunately you pass away within the first couple of years of having the reverse mortgage, unfortunately, all those upfront costs are going to be sunk costs. You're not really going to get the benefit of those. We don't have a crystal ball to know how long you're going to live, but generally the longer you live and the longer you can take advantage of using that reverse mortgage and all the benefits, the more uh, return on investment you're going to have and the less risk that you're going to have. Another thing a lot of people get worried about as a risk with a reverse mortgage is that they're going to owe more on the house than it's worth when they pass away. So if you have a house that's worth, say, 300000 but then when you pass on or have to pay this back, what if the house is only worth 275000 Then what? Well, one of the benefits of a reverse mortgage is that it alleviates the risk of being upside down because there's a provision in the reverse mortgage that makes it so that if at the time that the home is going to be sold, there is more owed on the mortgage than the property is worth, then HUD will allow 95% payoff based on what the fair market value of the home is. So what that means in layman's terms is that you can sell the home, pay 95% of the home value back to the to HUD or FHA who's holding the mortgage. And that difference, that, uh, that deficiency in the balance, it's actually going to be eaten by the mortgage insurance fund. You're not going to have to pay it. Your heirs are not going to have to pay it. There's not going to be a bunch of money owed to anyone after the home is sold. The mortgage insurance premium fund actually takes care of that shortfall. So one of those big risks is actually a myth with the reverse mortgage to keep in mind. Now, how do we compare a reverse mortgage or how does it compare to other types of mortgages out there? Well, let's look at a forward mortgage and let's look at a line of credit, a home equity line of credit. The biggest difference is that, can, is that the reverse mortgage payments are optional. On all these other mortgages, payments are required. Well, what if you want to take a vacation that month instead of making your payment? You can't do that with a forward mortgage or a line of credit, a uh, forward mortgage line of credit, I should say, or home equity line of credit. You can do that with the reverse mortgage, so more flexibility there. The other thing is on the line of credit, with the reverse mortgage, it grows every year. However, with a home equity line of credit, in order to get more money, you have to refinance it or have your home reappraised. Reverse mortgage, you don't need to do that. It increases by a contractually obligated amount every single month. So that's a huge advantage of the reverse mortgage line of credit uh, versus any other uh, instrument, mortgage or otherwise, that you can get on your home. It's one of the reasons why reverse mortgage lines of credit are really the holy grail of credit lines because they keep going up and you're not required to pay them back. So the comparison is really apples to oranges because the reverse mortgage in most cases is going to make a lot more sense uh, than a forward mortgage or a line of credit because of the repayment flexibility we were talking about. Now, what's the process to get a reverse mortgage? A reverse mortgage is very different 
from a regular forward mortgage or home equity line of credit maybe you've gotten before. The big difference is going to be the process. So with a regular mortgage, you can just go and hop into an application right away. With a reverse mortgage, though, the process is different. You need to start out by getting counseled. The federal government HUD requires that you get counseled before you move forward with an application for a reverse mortgage. So the way that's going to look is we'll collect some preliminary info, get a general idea or estimate of what you would qualify for on a reverse mortgage, how much money you'll have access to, that sort of thing to make sure it's going to be feasible. Then from there, we'll give you a proposal package that you then will take to a housing counselor a nonprofit counselor that's going to allow you to get counseled on the reverse mortgage. Again, it's a requirement. There's no way around it. After that counseling session, and sometimes, many times, it can be done by phone or in person. You can choose what works best for you. They're going to give us a certificate. And that certificate is your meal ticket to move forward with the processing of the mortgage application for the reverse mortgage. Until we have that certificate in hand showing that you've passed that counseling session, we cannot do an appraisal on your home. We cannot submit the loan to underwriting. We really can't do anything else in the process, but give you an initial estimate proposal. Now, once you actually have that certificate in hand, then at that point, a lot of the mortgage process looks similar to other types of loans. We're going to collect some documentation from you. We're going to do a title search. We're going to do an appraisal of the home. Reverse mortgages sometimes actually require two appraisals, not only one like a regular mortgage, but many times they actually require two. Uh, and we'll go through that entire process. Then when it's all done, you'll go to a closing much like you've done before. So the big difference is going to be in the upfront, in the intake part of the process. Don't expect that we can hit the ground running and just order an appraisal right away. Like I said, we have to do these other things. So hopefully today's lesson gave you a great primer on reverse mortgages, a good intro to reverse mortgages. And if this is something that's resonating with you or someone that you know may be looking into this, I do offer personal consultations and I'm happy to help you with a reverse mortgage in Connecticut, Massachusetts, as well as the state of Florida. Those are the three states I'm registered and licensed to help you in. So if I can be of assistance to you or someone that you know, reach out to me by call, text, or private message. My direct line is 860-413-3938. As always, I hope that helps, and we'll see you on the next episode. Take care.